Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lake MRI. And this is a patient who is 60 years old, came in with complaints of left upper extremity weakness, acute onset. She just woke up in the morning with a deficit. So they thought, uh-oh, maybe she has a stroke. Let's do an MRI of the brain. So on this MRI of the brain, we see that she does have an abnormal finding here on the left side. Now, this is her putamen here, this gray thing part of the basal ganglia. Along the inner margin is the globus pallidus, and then we have along the inner margin of that still is the internal capsule here, this dark area, and this is called the uh, caudate nucleus here, part of the basal ganglia as well, the gray area. So this is along the posterior margin of the left putamen. So this is on the wrong side. She had symptoms on the left-hand side, so we'd expect the lesion to be on the opposite side. Also, we'd expect the lesion to be in the internal capsule here, but we don't see that. It's in the uh, basal ganglia, and that can help regulate movements, but it just wouldn't cause a deficit. So we figured this is not the cause of her symptoms, but uh, definitely a problem. So looking elsewhere, we see a few little specks scattered around, probably related to chronic small vessel ischemia or less likely vasculitis. No evidence of a major territory infarction. And so we needed to look at the diffusion sequence to see if that was um, bright or not, and sure enough, here it is. On the left-hand side, we see this area of restricted diffusion, really hyper-intense. So this is compatible with a small acute lacunar infarction. I think we found out later that she has chronic hypertension that may have been the etiology. And so this diffusion-weighted image uh, shows uh, fluid that is restricted, the, the Brownian motion that allows fluid to move in different directions. Uh, normally can freely flow in the interstitial space or extracellular space in any direction it wants to, but when it becomes intracellular, then it gets restricted within that cell and can't move. It's stuck within the cell membrane. So when someone has an acute stroke, that area of ischemia, you have cytotoxic edema, the edema rather, the, swell, the cells swell up and the extracellular fluid becomes intracellular. The, the cells are enlarged and the interstitial space is small. And for those reasons, the fluid is just stuck in there and doesn't diffuse freely and randomly. And so this will cause restricted diffusion. Now, some of this bright signal is from restricted diffusion, most of it, but some of it is also from something called T2 star effects or uh, T2-weighted signal. So what we have to do is make sure there's not T2-weighted signal that's causing this, making this be artifactual. What we think is a stroke and it's really not. It's just related to T2 shine through. So we have one more thing to do, and that's to look at another um, image. It's called the ADC map, or the apparent diffusion coefficient map. And on that one, we'll be able to see is the fluid, I'm sorry, is the signal from fluid or is it not from fluid? And here's the sequence we can see. This is called the ADC map, and we see fluid is really bright. We look around, and over here we see this area that's dark. So this is true restricted diffusion. It's not from bright fluid, because again, if this were uh, T2 shine through, it wasn't an acute stroke, but rather related to fluid, it would have been really hyper intense here, or just not black like this. So this is a low apparent diffusion coefficient, which means there's true restricted diffusion, and this is related to a small acute lacunar infarction. Now on the diffusion weighted images, other things can also be bright. Uh, one, the most, I guess, common one is the epidermoid. So an epidermoid, um, the cerebellopontian angle can often occur there. And sometimes you can't tell if they are an arachnoid cyst or an epidermoid. And the arachnoid cyst is just fluid. So it will have fluid signal intensity characteristics and it would not be bright on the ADC map or it wouldn't be bright on this uh, diffusion weighted sequence. But a, I'm sorry, an arachnoid cyst would have fluid signal just like this would be dark on the diffusion weighted image and it would be bright on the ADC map. Also with herpes and the temporal lobes, you have a bilateral temporal lobe involvement. Herpes can cause cytotoxic edema, the cells will swell, and you'll have true restricted diffusion. But if you have gliomatosis in the temporal lobes, it will not have that same amount of restricted diffusion. And so that's it. This is a small acute lacunar infarction in the posterior left basal ganglia. It did not explain the symptoms, um, but those were found to be caused by some uh, disc abnormalities and facet disease of the cervical spine. And thank you very much.